You've got XBMC installed. You have your folder. I've opened the X, XBMC, and you can see that we're in the root menu of the default skin. Whichever option from this menu one chooses, another menu will pop up and so on through the menu tree. At any given point in navigating through the main menu, one can also pull up the context menu by pressing the letter C on the keyboard. This menu provides us with choices about how to manage the task associated with where you are in the regular menu tree. Now, XBMC needs to know where to look for your movies. So let's navigate to the uh, video tab on the home screen, which is where, where we are, and press Enter. Okay, now we've got a couple of choices here. We could go straight to video plugins. We're not going to do that. That's not what this is about. What we want to do today is um, add a source. So we're going to show XBMC where to look for your movies. So we're going to highlight, and I'm just right uh, hitting the right arrow to pick add source and hitting the enter key. And now we come up with this dialog box. And um, the obvious thing to do here is to highlight uh, browse. And then we're just going to go to uh, the location where we've got our movie folders. And I put a little one up on my desktop here just to illustrate. Okay, so that's the folder that I want. And those are the three that are within that. So I hit uh, right click and it, go, and it takes me down to OK. I hit enter. And now it's suggesting a name and our name for this media source. And I could change that. I can use the down arrow, come down and change that from movies to something else. Uh, but I like the name movie, so I'm going to leave it. Now, if I stop there, nothing's going to happen because XBMC doesn't know what I want to do with this source. So I have to tell it what the content is. So again, I'll scroll, scroll with my arrow keys to set content, hit enter, and it opens up another dialog. And it says this directory contains, and this is where you're going to tell XBMC what kind of media is in that folder. So I just hit enter, and you can see that it, the first thing that it came to there was movies. But there's other options, TV shows, music videos, and nothing. So I have a different folder for each of those things. Uh, if it's a movie folder, then I'll pick movies here. If it's a folder with TV shows, obviously I'll pick TV shows here. If it's a folder with music videos, I'll pick music videos here. My folder with internet videos, I select as none, and I'll talk about that more in a little bit. But this one is movies. Now notice that when I set it to movies, underneath there it says TMDB. It's highlighted and it shows the little um, logo at the, on the right for uh, the movie database. And uh, that's, a, that's a great organization, but that's not the one I want to use. This is the source that it's going to go to the Internet and try to find information about your movie. There's a lot of good sources, but the one that you can control the most easily is IMDb. So I'm going to scroll down to IMDb using the down arrow and hit enter. Now you can see IMDb uh, has its logo highlighted. And after I hit enter, I automatically am put down to uh, options for the way that uh, this folder is going to be treated. And I want it to run an automated scan. And I want it to use folder names for lookups. And that's all I want it to do. If it was a uh, TV shows, and I would also pick uh, scan recursively to go down deeper into the folder. But I'm not done yet. So it knows that I want to go to IMDb, but it doesn't know what I want to get from IMDb. That's what that little choice down there, the uh, settings choice, and I just keep scrolling down until it puts me on that line, and then I scroll sideways to settings. Now I can tell IMDb what it is I want to, want to get off of their website. So I want it to um, give me full cast credits. It's already got the um, Internet Movie Poster Awards site uh, highlighted. And I'm going to also take the uh, Movie Poster database and enable that. So it, it can get all of these things. And I've enabled fan art and enabled trailers. Now, you can 
cut down the size of your library by not enabling these things, but why the heck would you do that? There's storage space is so cheap nowadays, and it adds so much fun to uh, interacting with your media if you have all of these things enabled. So we've enabled everything, and now by hitting the right arrow, I get down to the bottom line, and I can click on OK. So that puts me back into my set content dialog box. I'm done now. So I've told it it's movies, that I want it to scrape IMDb, and that uh, I, I want it to um, automatically scan and to use folder names. Uh, and I've set up all the settings for IMDb. So now I can click on OK, and uh, I'm done defining that what I want done with that video source. So I can click OK at this dialog box. And now you can see that Movies appears on the screen. And then in the upper right-hand corner, it says Downloading Movie Information. So now it's actually going to the Internet. The movies were already on my computer, but it's going to the Internet and adding information about those movies to the computer. So it's going to run there for a second. Okay, it's done running. So now I'll just hit the escape key. It puts me back to videos. So normally, if you remember, this is where you would come in to uh, XBMC. So I'll hit uh, enter to select videos, pick the uh, source that I want. Now, right now, notice that it says library mode, but the dot is grayed out. That means that I'm not in library mode. I'm in file view. So in file view, what's going to happen is that I just see these folders pretty much the way I would in Explorer. But if I go over here and I change that to library mode, voila, it comes back. And now I would pick my movie source again. Now I have a choice. See, it's got all this information about those movies. I can look at the, my movies by genre, by title, by the year, by uh, favorite actor, or if I'm looking for a director, or so forth. But uh, for today's purposes, we'll just look at the uh, title. Now, as I go, you can see, for example, that A Good Year has a thumbnail of the uh, DVD cover, and then it also has a backdrop called fan art um, that enhances and f fills up the background of, of the picture. Uh, Mr. Destiny, unfortunately, it did find it, and it's got the um, cover from the DVD, and it has the correct information year and everything, but it doesn't have any fan art associated with it uh, that the scraper could find. And Snow doesn't even have a thumbnail that it could find, but it did get the uh, year correctly, and we saw this in the previous uh, tutorial. Now, if I hit the left arrow, it pops up a task menu, and I can actually go through here and change the way that um, my library is displayed. So let's go to a good year since it has all the features. And, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna highlight view. And right now it's set up to view uh, the fan art view. But if I hit enter, it'll change that to thumbnail view and you can see what that looks like. And I hit enter again and it goes to list and you can see what that looks like. And media info now, it's got the plot down at the bottom, and it still has the thumbnail, but it doesn't have any fan art. And DVD thumbs, <clears throat> again, it's got the, uh, the uh, thumbnail, but that's it. Cover flow, sort of like what you see in iTunes. Back to fan 